Hey everybody, Alex here, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more in detail about masking. Okay, the process of masking. And this is going to be a quicker tutorial. I just wanted to sort of highlight some of the differences between permanently deleting content using the delete key or the eraser or other methods that will be what we consider con uh, destructive versus um, using the masking tool, which is non-destructive. So you never permanently lose anything when you mask content. And that's a great way of cutting when you're in Photoshop. It's actually, I would recommend the, it being the method you use normally because you will never lose, you'll never permanently lose anything. You can always add content back. And if something is cut too, uh, too far, too much of the content is removed, you can always bring it back. You don't have to actually bring in a fresh version of the image. Okay. So, just want to go through this in a little more detail, show you some techniques and some of the ways you can mask effectively and uh, also ways to refine the edge a little bit. So I took the liberty here of making a new 8.5 by 11 landscape uh, layout. So there's my blank background. We also have here uh, this kind of nice, um, it's almost like a, a sunset background. And then I have a couple of um, images of cows. <laughs> so... I'm basically planning to put these cows uh, in front of that uh, nice epic sunset background. Okay, so let's go ahead. We've already kind of uh, filled the background here with the sunset. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to choose this first cow here. So this is nice because it's a blue background. It's kind of, um, you know, the sky is often a very great natural blue screen, as we say. Uh, a consistent color, which is easier to cut out. So this will be an easy uh easy subject to cut out if i want to get rid of the blue what i do is i just make sure i select the right layer it's the top one there okay i'm going to move my history down here a little bit and i'm going to go ahead to the magic wand you could use the quick selection also uh do a new selection go ahead and click the blue area so i didn't quite get everything i'll go to the next uh selection option over up here which is the add to selection option Again, you could use the quick selection if you prefer. And then I'm just going to add kind of area, areas of the blue that may have been missed. And it's, it doesn't have to be perfect if it's not. It looks like we got pretty much everything here. Yeah. So at this point, you know, I could go ahead and hit the delete key. And I could just remove the content permanently. Um, there is also, this is a little side note, um, because I did a file place when I brought these in. They, they came in as what we call smart objects. I'm not going to go into too much about smart objects right now. Uh, that's for another tutorial. But uh, just to keep things simple here, I'm actually going to go ahead to the layer. I'm going to either right or control click, and I'm going to choose rasterize layer. Okay, because I don't want to deal with smart smart objects in this case. Uh, they're not directly editable. Long story short, in this case, I want to just demonstrate this. So anyway, if I go ahead and I hit the delete key, you'll see that it does remove the blue. But if we zoom in, let's take a closer look. I, I can't really say with any um, confidence that this blue was cut that well. I mean, there's still some blue that I see. It's a little bit of a rough edge. You know, at this point, yes, you could go to the eraser tool. I almost never know where it is because I rarely use it, but it's right here. And you could go in and you can kind of fine tune the edge a little bit. You know, uh, I could also go up here to my brush size and hardness and so forth. Um, but this would be very tedious to do. So I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're really cutting something very quickly. Uh, I wouldn't use the eraser or the delete. So let's go to our history here and, um, let's just back up a little bit to when we had our selection going. There we go. And what I think I'd rather do is to, um, add a mask. Now, of course, if I were to hit the add mask button right now, and it's right here at the bottom of the, um, layer panel once we have our ant trails as we see here and our selection ready we can go ahead and click it but here's the thing it'll remove what i want i'll actually lose the cow right it's the blue i want to get rid of so before i do that i'm going to go back in time here history by the way if you need to find your history panel window history okay if you're ever looking for a panel that's how you do it but um i'm going to go back here and what i'm going to do is with this layer selected with my ant trail still visible I'm going to go up to select inverse. So that will choose everything but the cow. Then I'll hit the add mask button. 
Okay, and now I've masked it. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, it still has that blue edge, that slight blue edge. Yes, but I can do some things to clean it up a little bit, such as I can double click the mask icon. So that's the little icon, as you can see next to the main icon here, right? In the layers panel, there's this other icon and you see it's like black and white. The white is what stays, the black is what goes away, if that makes sense. So it's kind of representing the cow there with the white and the black was where the blue used to be. Now, if I double click this little icon for the mask, it'll go ahead and take me to this nice um, sort of select and mask area. And while here, there's also an invert button, by the way, had you made the mistake and not done select inverse originally, you could have done it here. So if I hit this now, I can actually swap it the other direction, make the, the cow transparent. But anyway, there's a couple options here for smoothing, feather, contrast, uh, shift edge. These are just ways to smooth out the edge and kind of soften the edge. So I can go ahead and I can turn the smoothness up. Maybe I want to do the shift edge a little bit to make it a little tighter on, on, the, on the cow. And that's going to help to kind of clean it up a little bit, a little more contrast. You know, a little, little, little tiny bit. Of, uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. You, you got to be careful with feather. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of feather. Um, you know, so you're just trying to. It's sort of a trial and error type of thing. Let me go. I may have even done the smoothness too much here. Let me go ahead and click OK. I just want to see what I ended up with here. Whoops. Yeah. So you, as you can see, it got a little bit tighter there. There's still a little bit of the blue. That I'm trying to get rid of so I might have to do a little more of a kind of shift edge and um, you know you just have to kind of play with that a bit um, you know probably more con like more contrast it would benefit from um, so again you can kind of play with those settings I think yeah looking at it now I probably even though I'm a little cautious about the feather I probably do need some feather there um, so you just kind of play with it and, and, and it should help you kind of smooth it out a little bit more. Obviously fur is one of the trickiest things to get rid of. So it's going to be, you know, one of those kind of trial and error type things. The other thing is though, you could also come in and if you click the mask with the brush tool, you can come in and you can paint directly on the mask. Now, what does that mean? So there's a white and black factor to the mask here. So if I paint with white, so what my way over here where my foreground color is, if I set this to white, by the way, if you just hit this little, uh, it's the default foreground background button, this little button above it, it'll make it be on white there. If I go to white, you're going to see, oh my goodness, it's actually going to bring the blue back. That's not what we want to do, but that's what would be what it does. So let me undo that. I'm actually going to switch to black. Let me zoom in here. and Maybe for some of these areas where it's a little bit harder to cut around, there's also a channel method for cutting out hair, by the way, that we could get a little more advanced, but just want to show you this. Um, yeah, I can come in and I can paint, and as you can see, with black, I kind of paint away. And I can make my brush really small. I'm using the brackets, by the way, as a shortcut. It's the same thing as if I, the brackets on my keyboard, it's the same thing as if I went up here to the, uh, uh, right, no, this next one over, yeah, the size of my brush and shrunk it down. And then I can really get in there in some of these more stubborn areas where I might have to paint around. Oops. I'm trying to make my brush really small. I'm talking about like a four pixel kind of brush here. There we go. See, I'm painting around it. And let's just say you cut too much, like, oh no. Yes, you could undo it. Or I could go to the little swapper here, swap back to white, and I can actually paint, paint it back. So with adding and subtracting, you can kind of uh, fine tune the edge there, okay? As well as using the select and mask, uh, formerly known as the refine edge tool by uh, double clicking on the mask itself. Okay, so lots of different options there. And that's really the heart and soul of um, masking. You can also go to the window properties panel and there'll be a little, oop, gonna nest it from all this stuff there'll be a little shortcut here to some things like a feather. So if I wanted to, I can actually use the feather here. Now notice if I turn the feather up too much, you start to get this kind of something like this. I've seen this a lot in my students' work where it's almost like there's a little uh, ghosting effect 
which you see on the edges around here. Now, if you get something like that, it probably means you may have turned the feather up too much and you have to turn it down. Uh, but I've had students who, you know, end up with something like that, like, ah, how do I get rid of that? Let's just say it's later and, um, you know, you were messing with the, the feather and you couldn't get rid of it. You can always just go to your mask tool, I'm sorry, to the, to the mask, to your regular brush tool. Let me go ahead and, well, yeah, I can use the brackets. Make it a little bigger, okay? You can see a little better here. See how my brush is growing? And you can come in and you can paint, whoops, that's what we gotta, you gotta make sure you switch to black. You can paint with black and just paint away that edge, see? Paint it away, okay? Just like that. Another cool trick you might want to do, and this is something I do when I'm cleaning up my edges sometimes to make sure that I didn't miss anything, is you can go ahead to the lasso and kind of do a very loose around the whole design type of entrails. So just kind of draw all around it, a little bit close to the subject, but not really exactly. I mean, around this ear is going to be a little tricky because it's right by the edge. Okay. Do your select inverse. Okay, make sure the mask is selected. Very important, the mask, not the main thumbnail. Okay, the mask. Okay, especially if it's a regular raster layer, you could paint black or, or put black or white permanently on the image. But with the mask icon selected, I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and I'm going to choose the color black. And what I'm basically doing is I'm adding more black to the mask. So look, everything outside of the antrails went away. So that's another way to clean up your edges. Okay. Um, but again, it, it could be just as simple as going to your properties panel and, um, you know, just turning that, that feather down, you know, if you went too heavy with it. Whoa, actually, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I think because, oh, I see what I did. I, <laughs> I, that's the density. So that's another metric that if you want, you can mess with that, but that may have a different effect on the mask. So I'm going to turn the feather way down here. Oh, too far, too far. Actually, this looks pretty decent now. Well, there's a little bit of blue still there, but not too bad. A little bit here I still have to clean up. Okay, so there you have it. Now, let's take a look at the other cow. For I'm going to hide this one and bring back the other cow. Now, this is a situation where, and let me go ahead, I'm going to do a Command T. Oops, on the wrong layer. Choose this one, Command T. And I'm just going to shrink this one down a little bit so it fits in there. This is a situation where um, it's almost like the last one, where there's a nice blue color consistently around it. But obviously, the blue is a little bit different on a higher altitude versus lower altitude. And then you get all this grass and other cows and other background here. So in a situation like this, sure, you can try to do like either a uh, magic wand or quick selection type of thing. Oops, next one down. So like, let me try quick selection here. It, but you're, yeah, so okay, that, it got, you know, it hugged that edge nicely. We're coming over here. I'm trying to get the entrails to go around just the cow. Yeah, so you can see it, 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 it is going around what I want, but then what about down here? So this is a situation where it might mask some of it, but not all of it. So you're going to use a combination of things here. So I, I started off with the quick selection because it nicely selected the kind of sky area. And then I'm going to do my select inverse. So it isolates the cow. And then I'm going to add a mask, making sure I'm on the right layer here, right? And then hit the mask icon. But as you can see, I still have this um, area down here. And it looks like there's a thin line up here I have to get rid of too. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to use some of the techniques we just talked about to get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead to my lasso and do another kind of loose kind of around everything selection. Get a little close to the cow there. It's okay if I'm not exactly against it. All the way up here. I'm going to do my select inverse. And then, then I'm going to do Edit Fill, Edit Fill, choose from the contents area here, black, it already remembers black, click OK. So part of the job is done for me now. Now it's just a matter of coming into this area down here. 
Uh, I mean, arguably, uh, you, maybe the quick selection can even catch some of that. It's a little bit of a different, uh, I mean, there's some differences in the, in the texture, but perhaps it would be um, possible to catch it. But let's just say it couldn't. Uh, in this case, I'd probably just go ahead and, you know, if the background was too complicated, as we say, uh, oh, there we go. Go to my, br my regular brush tool. Very important, the regular brush, not the history brush, not any other brush, just the regular brush tool. Your size and your your hardness, how soft or hard it is up here. You can use the brackets to shrink it if you want. Make sure I'm in the mask. Make sure black is there. I'm gonna hit the default foreground background. If not, this is the swapper. Switch to black and I'm gonna go ahead and paint around here. Now obviously it's gonna get a little too powdery, so I'm gonna, as I get closer, so I'm gonna harden the edge a little bit. I'm also gonna shrink down the um, brush and do my command plus command plus on my um keyboard here to get a little closer and then of course yeah you, then it's just a matter of how diligent you want to be with you know cutting it out i mean you can go ahead and you know get really oops sorry zoom in there yeah really precise with it if you want um you know and it's this is one of these things that as you do photoshop more you'll get a little better at it. I'm noticing I probably want a little bit more softness based on the other, you know, because there's always a little bit of blur depending on, you know, how sharp something is. So I, I want um, a little bit of blurriness to this, this edge here. So you just come in and again, if you cut too much, you can always switch to white. I see I cut a little too sharply there. So I'm gonna bring it back a bit. Okay, so this is all about just kind of nibbling. I keep, <laughs> I keep uh, right clicking there. That's why that keeps popping up. But anyway, you just kind of cut the rest of the, um, just cut it out really, you know. Cut out the rest of it. I'm, I'm not going to do it, you know, pristine here. It's a little bit I can see here. You know what? Sometimes helps, by the way, if you go to Window Channels. You can go ahead and, uh, oh, I got the channels has to be a nested here. And what I want to do is I just want to put on like a background for contrast. So this kind of nice little uh, ch channel here, this red channel, you know, against the red, you can kind of see a little better than against the checkerboard or the white, you know, depending on what background you have set. You know, and then you just kind of cut it out. See, that side is almost done there. I mean, again, I, I, I'm not going to go in and kind of fine tune it as exactly as you could, but that would be how you do it. Okay. And then same thing for this side. I'm curious though, if, let me see if the quick selection would actually work with that um, so, sort of sense that green area. It's, oh uh, yeah, see it's intruding on, it's intruding on the cow a little. Oh, maybe it's because I'm not on the mask. Yeah, important point guys, make sure you, you click on the main thumbnail again. Ah, there we go. Now it's just a matter of going back to the mask and doing an edit fill. So actually that one, you know, sometimes you get a little lucky. It's, it's, you know, but sometimes it's a little too complicated and you may have to uh, manually brush it. So there's my, my cow again, if I want, I could double click the mask, go to the, um, maybe give it a little bit of smoothness, tiny bit of feather, contrast, shift edge, play with these a little bit to get that kind of nice result. And then finally, and I know this guy still got a little bit of cleaning up to do on the head there, but I'm going to just go ahead and put, eh, maybe I'll put them over here. Put these two cows into their place. And then I'm going to put on my background. And there we go. We got some nice cows relaxing with the sun setting behind them. I got two masks here. And um, we saw some really cool ways to mask. So the manual way with the brush and using some shortcuts like the lasso or the quick selection. Masking is the way to go. You just want to use it because then you can keep coming in and fine tuning that hair and you're never going to have to bring in a fresh cow or whatever your image is because you will always be able to add and subtract from it. If I wanted to, I could flat out completely delete a mask and just drag it down to, whoops, drag it down to the trash here. If I can get a good grip on it, there we go using the trackpad, that's why it's bothering me there. Yeah, so, but I, I, I want my mask, so I'm, I'm actually going to undo that. Oop, is it gonna let me undo that? I guess I must have done a, oh, there we go, okay. 
So, yeah, um, that's masking in a nutshell and um, a little bit more of an in-depth look. And if you have questions, you can write them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot.